As winter storm Stella developed, many meteorologists realized the rain snow line may move farther west than expected. As a result, this late winter storm wasn't the blockbuster first forecast for big cities like New York and Boston, where snowfall was expected to reach over a foot. Instead, the hardest hit areas were further west in less populated cities. And the day after the storm, the National Weather Service held a conference call where they said that while they realized the storm wasn't going to produce the big totals, they didn't change their forecast because, quote, they did not want to confuse the public. For more on how this is going down, let's bring in uh, Greg Carbon, who's the Chief of Forecast Operations at the Weather Prediction Center. Good morning, Greg Carbon. Always a great uh, time to talk to you. Let's talk about this, though. What do you mean by you didn't want to confuse the public? <laughs> I'm, I'm a little confused at how things have evolved since uh, 48 hours ago, Jim. Yeah. But, uh, you know, these things, you don't get the answer key, right? You don't get the answer key ahead of time. So the atmosphere is full of mystery uh, leading up to an event like this. And uh, when we go down and we start playing the game of forecasting, you're not being dealt the full deck, right? Mother Nature holds back a card or two. And Always. so to say that, you know, you know ahead of time exactly what's going to happen uh, is not the truth. And, and it's paramount that we we have trust between the folks that we're forecasting for, our partners in uh, public service and public safety, and, and what we're generating for forecasts. And we also need to understand there's great uncertainty in those forecasts until the event occurs, right? So do you think that this should be considered a, quote, bust? Uh, it's certainly not a bust across parts of northern New England where, you know, Jim and I would probably love to be up there shoveling yes. the three feet of snow they've got. Um, this would be considered an excellent forecast with respect to timing and intensity. I think the decisions that were taken on the part of public safety officials in New York and Philadelphia uh, early in the morning were excellent decisions and probably saved lives. So regardless of whether you got a foot of snow or seven inches of snow like they did in Manhattan, the, the intensity and timing of this were forecast exceptionally well and resulted in excellent decisions on the part of the, the public and, and public safety officials. That's our mission in the National Weather Service, the protection of lives and property. And we do it by sharing scientific service and information with you, great communicators like the Weather Channel, emergency managers and others. And I consider this a success. Greg, let me ask you though, in terms of you didn't want to confuse the public, when you guys are sticking by your guns and local and national meteorologists are changing their forecast, isn't that in essence more confusing? to the public? It, we're in a confusing time, and Jim, you and I have talked about this before. You can find a forecast nowadays that fits what you'd like it to be, right? I mean, right. there are so many forecasts out there. And one of the big challenges is consolidating that information to come up with a message that's consistent ahead of, ahead of the event. Again, no one has the answer key ahead of time. There were indications in the model guidance and in the probabilistic information that we share to the public that the, the snowfall amounts for places like Philadelphia and New York were coming down. The probability for the high-end snowfalls were coming down in those areas ahead of time. So no one was holding anything back other than perhaps Mother Nature with the answer. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I remember being on air. I was in New York City for the storm and saying, you know, I'm concerned about yeah. the mixing and, you know, the, the sleet and the rain coming in. But do you think that the public focuses too much just on those numbers and perhaps the apps that they're looking at? Or is there a better way to articulate, you know, because we were articulating, well, you know, it could be a little yeah. tough with this right. one. How can yeah, we do better? I, we, we've got to do better, obviously. And I think what we're trying to convey is that, you know, our confidence in at least this much snow uh, and we give a number or a range of numbers, uh, the most likely scenario, which in this case for New York was on the high side, and then expect possibly up to this much or a worst case scenario. There, there has to be a better understanding that going into these events, there's going to be a range of possible outcomes and that you don't have the answer ahead of time. And if you do change the forecast, it's probably going to be gradually. It's probably going to be trending toward a certain uh, end state. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's right. And I think a lot of people are, are claiming that information was somehow withheld or that we had the right answer ahead of time and withheld that. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Right. Um, Greg, this is about explaining probability, and you know that. And it's one of the most difficult things in the world to do. Uh, one quick question for you here. We've got 30 seconds. Does yep. the social media aspect of this make it worse or better for you guys to control the forecast message? You know, we have to live in the age we're in. I do think we've gone from an age of information to an age of insinuation some, in some respect. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's the nature of where we are. And uh, thanks a lot for, for giving us an opportunity to explain this side. Yeah, uh, the people here are dedicated to what they do, and we'll keep talking. And they're all good people. No right. one's trying to Absolutely. fool anyone. You know, <laughs> We are all on the same team at the yes. end of the day. I don't care what the forecasts are, so don't forget all that. All good people trying to do thanks, the best Greg. that they can.